As Australia bolsters its land-based maritime strike capabilities under Project Land 8113 Phase 2, two contenders have emerged. The Kongsberg Thales Australia Strike Master, integrating the naval strike missile onto a Bushmaster protected mobility vehicle, and the Lockheed Martin High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, the HIMARS, paired with the Precision Strike Missile Increment 2, PRSM Inc. 2. With a decision looming by the end of 2025, this head-to-head -head comparison explores how these systems stack up in terms of range, mobility, integration with existing Australian Defence Force assets, and their strategic fit with Australia's defence needs in an increasingly contested Indo-Pacific. When it comes to range, the HIMARS PRSM Inc. 2 system takes a commanding lead. The PRSM Inc. 2, also dubbed the land-based anti-ship missile, offers a reach exceeding 400 kilometers, with tests hinting at potential beyond 500 kilometers. This ballistic missile's extended range allows Australia to strike maritime targets far from its shores, a critical advantage in countering distant threats across vast oceanic expanses. Its high speed, arsing trajectory poses a unique challenge to enemy defenses, complementing Australia's need to disrupt adversaries before they close in. In contrast, the Strike Master NSM delivers a still impressive range of over 250 kilometers. The NSM, a subsonic cruise missile, flies low and stealthily, skimming the sea to evade detection, making it a formidable precision weapon for coastal and mid range engagements. Its ability to autonomously recognize and prioritize targets enhances its lethality, but its range falls short of the HIMARS PRSM Inc. 2's capacity to project power deeper into the maritime domain. For a nation aiming to deter threats like China's missile-armed warships, which can strike from afar, this gap could prove decisive, though the NSM's range remains sufficient for many regional scenarios. Mobility is another key battleground. And here the Strike Master NSM shines with its use of the Bushmaster, a 4x4 protected mobility vehicle already battle-tested in rugged terrains from Afghanistan to Ukraine. Weighing around 12 tons, the Bushmaster's lighter frame and road-friendly design make it ideal for Australia's northern approaches, where challenging landscapes, mangroves, outback scrub, and narrow coastal tracks demand agility. It can be airlifted by C-130 aircraft or ferried by small landing craft, offering flexible deployment options across dispersed coastal regions and island outposts like the Torres Strait. The HIMARS, a 6x6 wheeled platform weighing about 16 tons when loaded, is no slouch either. Its mobility has been proven in combat, notably in Ukraine, and it supports rapid insertion tactics like HIMARS rapid infiltration via C-130 or C-17 transport. Its ability to shoot and scoot reduces vulnerability to counterattacks, a boon in high-threat environments. However, its larger size and heavier footprint may limit its maneuverability in some of Australia's tighter, more remote terrains compared to the nimble Bushmaster. For a nation needing to defend a sprawling 34,000-kilometer coastline with varied geography, the Strike Master's terrain adaptability could tip the scales. Though HIMARS remains a strong contender for swift, long-distance repositioning in open theaters or during large-scale joint operations. Integration with existing ADF assets reveals a stark contrast between the two systems' ecosystems. The Strike Master benefits from the NSM's adoption across multiple ADF branches. It's being fitted to the Royal Australian Navy's frigates and destroyers, while the related Joint Strike Missile equips the Royal Australian Air Force's F-35A fighters. The Bushmaster itself is a workhorse, with over 1,000 in Army and Royal Australian Air Force service, and the Strike Master's fire control system aligns with the Army's NASAM's air defense architecture, requiring only minor software adjustments. This seamless interoperability across land, sea, and air domains simplifies logistics, training, and maintenance, while enabling coordinated strikes. Imagine a Navy ship, an F-35, and a Strike Master targeting the same enemy vessel from different vectors. 
Meanwhile, the HIMARS PRSM Inc. 2 builds on Australia's $1.6 billion commitment to 42 HIMARS launchers. Initially armed with guided multiple launch rocket system munitions, and later PRSM Inc. 1, forming the backbone of the Army's Long Range Fires Regiment in the 10th Brigade, based in South Australia. While HIMARS integrates well with US aligned systems, like Patriot or Aegis, and offers future growth within the Army, PRSM Inc. 2 lacks the cross branch presence of the NSM, limiting its immediate synergy outside land forces. For an ADF prioritizing unified capabilities amid personnel shortages, currently at 4,400 below strength, Strikemaster NSM holds an edge, though HIMARS benefits from deep U.S. partnership and NATO standard compatibility. Strategically, both systems align with Australia's 2023 Defense Strategic Review and 2024 National Defense Strategy, which emphasize a strategy of denial and long-range strike to deter threats in the Indo-Pacific particularly from China's naval expansion. The Strike Master fits neatly into this framework with its focus on littoral combat and northern defense. Its 250-kilometer range is ample for coastal area denial, protecting key choke points like the Arafura Sea and its affordability, bolstered by sovereign production of Bushmasters by Thales Australia in Bendigo and NSM missiles at Kongsberg's new Newcastle facility starting in 2028, makes it a practical, rapid response option. This aligns with Australia's need for immediate capability uplift amid regional tensions, offering a build it here, use it now solution that reduces reliance on strained global supply chains. However, its range may not fully address the distant reach of adversaries equipped with hypersonic weapons or carrier groups operating beyond 400 kilometers. The HIMARS PRSM Inc. 2 with its 400 plus kilometer range, directly tackles this long range requirement, offering an all weather, persistent strike capability that enhances deterrence across Australia's maritime approaches, from the Timor Sea to the Coral Sea. Domestic PRSM production is planned at the Australian Weapons Manufacturing Complex from 2029, supporting sovereignty, but its reliance on US technology and longer acquisition timelines amid global demand from allies like the US and UK pose risks of delay or cost overruns. HIMARS thus caters to a future-proof, high-end threat environment, projecting power to shape the battle space, while Strikemaster delivers a cost-effective, now-ready solution for coastal priorities. Beyond these core metrics, additional factors enrich the debate. The Strikemaster NSM's subsonic, stealthy profile makes it harder to intercept, ideal for saturating enemy defenses in a first strike while the HIMARS PRSM Inc. 2's ballistic speed and altitude could overwhelm ship-based countermeasures, offering a complementary high-low mix if both were adopted. Cost estimates remain murky, but Strikemaster's use of existing Bushmaster stocks and a simpler missile suggests a lower upfront price tag, whereas HIMARS PRSM Inc. 2's advanced technology and global demand hint at a premium, potentially offset by its longer service life and upgrade potential. In this showdown, the HIMARS stands out for its superior range and strategic depth, making it the choice for long-term deterrence against advanced threats, while the Strike Master NSM excels in mobility, CO, ADF integration, and immediate coastal defense with a sovereign edge. Australia's decision will hinge on whether it prioritizes rapid deployment and interoperability to plug gaps now or invests in a longer range, more complex system to dominate the battle space of tomorrow. As the 2025 evaluation nears, the ADF faces a pivotal choice between agility and ambition in safeguarding its shores and perhaps a case for acquiring both to cover all bases.